so i started my career uh, as a, a php developer uh, uh, after graduation and then i after two years i moved to java so after um, in in java I, in last six year i am working as a java uh, in java spring boot microservices and um, two years i worked on the react also in, in the mm-hmm. last company i worked on the react uh, uh, with the front end developer are not available there so i uh, explored with the react and uh, uh, made some uh, web application on the react side so in the uh, uh, tools devops tool i worked on the uh, uh, docker kubernetes and uh, circle ci and um, jenkins and jira and git so the database i worked on is like mysql ms sql and mm-hmm. and in the case uh, uh, i worked on the hadle cast and uh, um, in the current project we have a multiple integration uh, in the current project is like movie booking platform so uh, we have a multiple integration with the payment gateway and uh, like just pay uh, uh, phone pay paytm mobi quick uh, mastercard all those integration are there and some integration like um, you know, quick silver for the gift card in- implementation and uh, mobi buff and tmdg for movie detail uh, showing information this type of integration are there uh, for seat layout services and seat committing vista services is there for the uh, managing seat data so this type of integration we, i have done in my career okay so what is the current application uh, like uh, what is the use of that application can you explain uh, uh, yeah. the one which you are working with? yeah so the use is like uh, customer can book the movie uh, and uh, okay. they they will get a uh, multiple offer and uh, multiple points uh, when completion of the um, some movie suppose uh, you have uh, uh, complete, done some movie part and uh, you book the some movie and after completion of that m- movie you will get some loyalty point loyalty point will be co- uh, converted after some time converted into the voucher and uh, through that you can get the discount uh, through that voucher this type of uh, uh, integration has been done okay and um, what now let's start with some java questions firstly yeah uh, yeah so uh, can you uh, like briefly explain how an hash map work, how a hash map works in java yeah so for the hash map we have a uh, key value so for each every key you uh, you will get some uh, some hash code uh, you have to create some hash code and has uh, based on the that has code uh, all the data will uh, store in the particular key and sub, suppose you will get same hash code because there uh, may be possibility you will get some same hash code for the particular uh, key so uh, will uh, in the case of the collision first will store inside the uh, link list uh, with the node and once th- this link list will uh, get heavier means they have multi- uh, a lot of data so uh, in that case java 8 in java 8 it has been implemented it will be automatically converted into binary search string uh, so, so what is the condition at with at what point exactly does that link list gets converted to uh, hashman uh, sorry uh, sorry tree a lot of data and when the insertion and deletion will be uh, because you need to get the uh, get the data from the key and uh, it should have a minimal operation like uh, when you want to uh, store some data or want to get some data uh, from the key you uh, have a minimum means it, it the algorithm should have a big of one uh, time complexity so for maintaining this uh, type of uh, um, uh, algorithm so that you will get minimum time complexity for, for finding any key value so uh, for that this uh, binary search implementation has, be, uh, has been implemented once uh, link list uh, because link list operation for the searching some data uh, is uh, is uh, um, means it's a costly process means it will uh, more time complexity so that's why it will be converted into binary search team. okay uh... Can you explain me how the heap memory and stack memory works? Uh, like when uh, during a, like uh, when you are calling a function uh, at that time, what uh, exactly happens? Like suppose you are calling a function from a main method, and then what will be the uh, like status of heap memory and stack memory at that time? So uh, the um, when you are 
calling any of uh, function or uh, method uh, if you are calling so in the, the after the calling method one object is getting created and uh, so uh, that will be stored inside the heap memory uh, and uh, suppose you have a string type of data that that will going to be stored inside the stack memory so uh, the garbage collector is there suppose some uh, you are process uh, operating uh, some operation you are performing and uh, the operation will be performed uh, after performing operation uh, suppose your user data uh, means your uh, object is uh, getting unused in that case uh, your garbage collector run and uh, it will uh, remove the uh, unused memory uh, from your uh, uh, from your uh, heap uh, heap memory and and how the method calling uh, gets uh, like uh, stacked upon in the stack uh, can you explain that so a method when you are calling some method then it will be um, uh, the, in the method area uh, it will be stored inside the stack and then uh, once the method is, is uh, task is performed it, it it's uh, thrown out to, to the main memory uh, so that a stack will not be overloaded or or means it, it will in create instance instance of the, the particular thing and once operation will be confirmed uh, performed, it will move out from the memory okay, okay. Uh, can you explain uh, like uh, when does a garbage collector actually act uh, like through internal java yeah uh, so like when does it automatically act yeah so uh, suppose uh, some you, you 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 are creating some instance or some uh, instance, instance has been created but, uh, so in that case once uh, you are performing some operation right and operation mm -hmm. will be after performing operation the uh, uh, object will be unused means uh, there is no use of that particular object so uh, at that time uh, garbage collector comes and uh, it will remove uh, remove that object from the memory and uh, um, this process will be uh, repeated again and again once um, uh, when Java application is running. Okay. Okay. Uh, I'm writing one small uh, code snippet. Uh, just suggest me which one would be a better approach. Okay. Yeah. Uh, just type two statements. First is a dot equals. Uh, a dot equals uh, string uh, j double quotes j yeah. and in the next next line uh, type uh, quotes j dot equals a what would be the correct approach like uh, suppose a is a string mm -hmm. uh, what would be the correct approach or the most accurate approach uh, you will have uh, like the first option or the second option and why first one okay uh, actually the second one is uh, correct way because uh, suppose even uh, like a can be null correct mm -hmm. and if you will call dot equals method on a null object it will throw a null pointer exception so because of that uh, when we have like some hard coded value uh, we use the string value dot equals some object that way okay no worries okay. um okay noted. uh you have used docker as well no correct right, right. yeah uh can you name some of the commands uh, that we that you have used uh, like uh in your day-to-day -day practice um in the last project i have used docker uh, so uh, so uh, like can you name some of the commands uh, like like we have docker ps and apart from that uh, if you know any commands uh, like which you have used on the console uh, or cli mm. <clears throat> yeah uh, was it mostly automated like uh, through ci cd or something like that yeah it is means after the means like uh, uh, i am coding, pushing the code uh, mm -hmm. inside the uh, means git push and branch name it will automatically mm -hmm. uh, run through the uh, uh, means it, it will be connected with the our uh, bit, bit bucket and it will mm -hmm. roll out to the um, our aws service okay okay mm -hmm. got it 
So, uh, let's go on some questions on Spring Boot. Uh, can you name some of the annotations which you have used, uh, like yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, any so Spring Boot application? Uh, like, uh, yeah. yeah, please go. So, at the rate rest control, generally what we are using is right at the rate rest controller, at the rate service, at the rate component, at the rate table, mm -hmm. at the rate entity, and uh, mm -hmm. for the mapping at the rate one to many, many to one and uh, mm -hmm. for the um, like uh, auto wiring uh, we are using at the rate auto wire uh, okay uh, one question uh, like what is the difference between uh, like get mapping and request uh, request mapping so uh, request mapping in general if you are writing request mapping it will work with the post mapping also and get mapping also so, uh, mm -hmm. request ma ma mapping get ma uh, mapping is a specific request or post mapping is also a specific mm -hmm. request for the post and request mapping mm -hmm. work for both. Okay. And what is the difference between query parameter and path parameter? So, a uh, path path variable you are talking about, no? Yeah, path. Uh, yeah. Path so, path variable is like uh, um, uh, suppose you are uh, sending some data uh, through the uh, get request and uh, <laughs> using some variable. So uh, if you are using right at the right path variable, it will take data uh, from the particular URL. Suppose you have a uh, URL slash user ID, then the mm -hmm. user ID variable will be put inside that uh, um, uh, inside your uh, parameter and if you are mm -hmm. specifying that you are at the rate request param so uh, the key value pair you are sending from the body will be take, uh, taking that uh, particular uh, key and uh, that key will be matched from the uh, what you are sending and what in your uh, uh, controller it is written so same value mm -hmm. it will map and then it will provide the uh, request uh, for the further trans uh, transaction okay uh, like uh, what all HTTP status codes do you know, like uh, which you have usually usually, seen regularly? Seen? Usually, uh, 200 and 501 and 502 and internal server error, also uh, like that. This type of a status code uh, we are using, but uh, for the status code in our uh, API, we have uh, created some. Uh, means uh, for the response we have created some status code and generally we are getting 200 or 502 like the okay the and uh, like do you have uh, authentication mechanism as well definitely i think yeah. it should be there yeah so like suppose if uh, the user user is not able to uh, like uh, is forbidden from that uh, page uh, what will be the status code uh, that you'll see forbidden Uh, it's 403 no worries uh, yeah. like 404 is for not found not 403 found. is for uh, forbidden, uh, forbidden 400 is for bad request, bad request 200 yeah. is for success and 206 is for partial content yeah. and uh, 201 is for created i guess um, yeah, yeah no worries um have you worked on aws as well uh, AWS is basically in our system uh, we are using for the deployment purpose. Uh, so mm -hmm. I uh, know how to create EC2 in instances and uh, is like that. But uh, we mm -hmm. don't have that much access. Uh, means we don't have access okay. to our servers. That's why we are not able to means do practice on those part. So, mm -hmm. so do you do it through Terraform script or uh, like cloud formation or uh, directly manually you create those? So that that uh, will be created inside the means dev ops team what they are doing i don't know but when mm -hmm. i was doing that uh, will be created from the interface itself mm -hmm. okay so like uh, how would you rate how much would you rate yourself on aws aws uh, two one or two in aws so basically, basically usually you might be doing some uh, like using some dynamo db yeah. or uh, like uh, S3 buckets and those yeah, things? Yeah, S3 bucket uh, we are using and uh, because all those uh, data means uh, all those images uh, we are uh, uh, transferred to the, uh, the uh, we, you have it uh, in uh, transport to method where all the uh, um, variable means like 
uh, all the configuration is configured in one class in a single class mm -hmm. and we have a transfer to method we uh, transfer image uh, uh, from our system and get the uh, url from there and uh, we use that url uh, for multiple purposes this type of transaction uh, we are uh, we are used to do in aws um, currently we moved and let me ask some questions from sql as well mm -hmm. uh, like uh, what um like suppose uh, you have 100 records okay and uh, they are ordered in uh, like you want to fetch uh, those records uh, in sequence uh, based on the id okay mm -hmm. so, uh, sorted by id mm -hmm. and you want to fetch uh, from id 10 to 30 okay mm. and you should use 30. limit and offset yeah 10 to 30 and mm. you should use limit and offset uh, mm. can you write that query once mm. like consider the table as student and uh, our roll number as the id So ten to thirteen, you want na record only. From ten uh, to thirteen, record. Three record. No, record. ten to thirty. Three zero. Thirty, thirty. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I'll suggest you to use uh, limit and offset both. Both. Uh, the limit will be 20 and offset will be 10 because we want 20 records from the 10th record correct so uh sorry uh, the offset will be 9 and the limit will be 20. Uh, yeah but uh, th uh, uh, this is generally we are using is the uh, 10 to 30 it will create uh, give you uh, 10 to uh, from the 10 to 30 record Okay, this is in MySQL or yeah, uh, MySQL. like okay, okay. I haven't tried it this way. No worries. And uh, I think we are good. Oh. No worries. Uh, like I'll share the review with the HR, and uh, HR will get back to you there. Yeah. So